So, talking about Leonardo III from the top, um, these first four bars and one sixth of a bar, four and one sixth of a bar, um, have to be some of the scariest bars for flute players. Um, but second entry, you've got this amazing journey off into A flat major, and then before you know it, so suddenly this incredibly mysterious music, which is sort of based very extraordinarily to start with. Um, this section, I think, is often that people get much too active with all these triplets because it's on a pedal note. Um, so it's all, and it's a floating harmony. I always think it sounds like the moonlight sonata. You get. Just ascending up the arpeggios. This feeling, so this the feeling of this kind of like constant rippling rhythm and this stable harmony as well. So it's got this very pause and already feeling about it. Um, so it doesn't want a lot of activity. It is marked staccato. Um, moving on to later in the piece, but then we get the, the big, fast allegro solo. What, what is the character of this? I'm, I'm always slightly intrigued by, the, by this, uh, in that you hear a lot of bravura performances and feeling about it. Um, and rather like um, the solo from Volzhak 8, I think it's nice. Repetition, I always feel there should be some sort of game plan with it. Um, why, why did he repeat? Why, I mean, it, you know, fortunately for us, why? nasty, very, very nasty long note. Um, which, of course, in the orchestral context is not something you worry about at all. It's absolutely fine. But it's just unpleasant for those having to do auditions that you happen to... Have and to just to talk about the, um, the introduction to the fast solo, um, also, you know, if you're playing the whole um, overture, you get this lovely music before um, with very, very long breaths. 